I'm sorry, Mrs. Garrett, I didn't mean to startle you. Oh, Mr. Drummond, it's very dangerous to sneak up behind me. I'm going to karate class, and I just got an A in kicking where it hurts. <laughs> Hey, it's these thick carpets. I once lost a small lawyer in this room. <laughs> I love a little joke. When they're that little, they need a lot of love. The boys will be here any minute. The boys... The boys will be here any minute. Is their room ready yet? Oh, yes, sir. There's just one thing left to do. Uh -huh. What's that? I quit. Quit? Oh, no. No, please, I promise I'll never scare you again. I'll, I'll wear a bell around my neck. When you hired me yesterday, you said you had one 13-year-old daughter. You didn't say anything about two boys coming to live here. I don't do windows, and I don't do boys. <laughs> well, what have you got against boys? They bite. I'll buy you a tetanus shot. <laughs> Okay, okay, so I did overlook a little thing like two boys. <laughs> Please, Mrs. Garrett, they're orphans. Please help me make them feel at home here. I hardly know them. Orphans? From Harlem. Harlem? Yes. Their mother was my housekeeper for many years. A sweet, wonderful woman. She was like a member of the family. On her deathbed, she asked me to look after her two boys. They have no relatives that can take them in. Uh, are you trying to make me feel rotten? Yes, I am. You're doing a great job. Thank you. You're welcome. You see, they're two innocent, sweet, helpless little boys. All and... right, all right. I've been sucked in. They're here. I'll get it. No, no, I'll do it. I'm very good with doors. <laughs> Aha! You're here. Welcome, gentlemen. You talking to us? Of course. How about that, Willis? Downtown two minutes and already we're gentlemen. <laughs> Come in. Come in. Mm -hmm. This is small place. Let's shake hands, huh? Like uh, a brother. I've been practicing, Willis. <laughs> No wonder they can't play basketball. <laughs> You've got a sense of humor like your mother. Oh, Mr. Drummond, can I give you a hand with the boys? Fellas, this is Mrs. Garrett, our housekeeper. This is Willis and Arnold Jackson. Hi. Hi, fellas. <laughs> she got it right. <laughs> Mr. Garrett, are you passing? <laughs> No, only my hair is bleached. <laughs> Mrs. Garrett, why don't you take the boys' things up to their room and I'll show them around. Be glad to. Here, let me have this, dear. Be careful of my goldfish. His name's Abraham. <laughs> I've never seen a black goldfish before. That's okay. He never saw a rich white man before either. <laughs> if Abraham looks like he's dead, don't worry. He's just sleeping. Uh, my ex-husband had the same problem. Oh, excuse me, boys. Hi, sweetheart. Hello, Daddy. Oh, they're here. Oh, look at them. 
Look at them, Daddy. Just look at them. Aren't they gorgeous, real boys? Welcome, little brother. Welcome, big brother. What's she smoke? Boys, this hurricane that just blew in is my daughter, Kimberly. This is Arnold, and this is Willis, Kimberly. Hi there. Hi. Hi, metal mouth. <laughs> Daddy, isn't this delicious? We've just met, and already he's insulting me like a real brother. <laughs> By the way, guys, stay out of my room, or I'll punch you out. <laughs> you not mess with me, or else I'll reach up, belt her in an eat. <laughs> Hey, I'm so darn glad to have you fellas here, I can't tell you. Well, what do you think of your big new house? Got big places in Harlem, too. Yeah, but they're all falling down. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come here, boys. I want to show you something. What? I want to show you the view from up here. I've got a surprise for you. Look, you can see the whole city from here. We're on the 30th floor. Eh, ain't this something? Imagine. Living up so high, you can't even smell the garbage. <laughs> I never smelled the garbage in Harlem. You better check your smell, fella. <laughs> this is my kind of pad. I'm glad, Arnold. It's my kind of pad, too. <laughs> Look at that view, Willis. On a clear day, you can see New Jersey. Not that anyone would want it. <laughs> <laughs> You know something, Arnold? That chair you're sitting in is 200 years old. With all your money, can you afford to buy a new one? <laughs> no, it's an antique. See, the older it gets, the more it's worth. Well, it's... We were sitting on a fortune in Harlem, and we never knew it. <laughs> Boys, listen. I am going to open up a whole new world for you. I'm going to see that you had the same advantages that I had growing up. You're going to go to the best schools, the finest colleges, where you can learn about things like art and music, Rembrandt, Van Gogh, Chopin. They're all friends of yours. <laughs> They're all dead, Dodo Head. What killed them? Well, they lived a very long time ago. In other words, you don't know what killed him. <laughs> Look, Mr. Drummond, you done a nice thing promising Mama you take care of us. But Arnold and me ain't gonna take no charity. Oh, hey, I am not offering charity. You get no free lunch here. You mean we gotta pay for our eats? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean you're gonna have to work for it. You're gonna have to go to school, study hard, and become solid citizens. Do we get time off for good behavior? <laughs> No. Well, I want to show you your room and my hot tub. You stole a tub? If we help you fence it, we get half. This is a hot tub. And you are welcome to use it anytime you want. Going in this ocean without no lifeguard. You boys are gonna love it. When anything is bothering me, I just slip into the tub and it eases away my tension. How much bread you left for this wash tub? About four thousand dollars. No wonder you got tension. <laughs> it's worth every cent. To have a place where you can think about life and reflect, soak away your troubles, and make important decisions. Of course he is. Nobody speaks for me but me. And when he speaks, nobody listens. <laughs> Except for me. Come on, guys. I want to show you the way to your room. Willis! Oh, are you going to run? <laughs> well, here it is, boys. How do you like it? Anything I ever saw in a Brady Bunch. Willis, you take the top. Arnold, you sleep in the lower bunk. How come you keep telling us what to do all the time? Don't you think we have any brains? I'm sorry. Willis, I guess I just committed another faux pas. You did what for your pa? <laughs> no, Arnold. That's French for uh, I blew it. Arnold. 
you sleep up top. Okay, boss. But just don't go drinking the water before bedtime. <laughs> I don't want no accidents. <laughs> okay, if you go eating onions, don't go breathing up. <laughs> Arnold, there's a handy ladder here for you to make it easy. You need a ladder? Stand back, everybody. <laughs> here comes Arnold. <laughs> See? It was nothing. Nice climbing, Arnold. I'll get your flag to plant up there. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you guys are a tough audience. <laughs> but I sure am glad to have you both here. You know something? I always wanted a son. And now I got two of them. I'm a very lucky man. Okay, guys, I'm gonna leave you alone to unpack. Ah! I don't, we don't belong in this place. Trump ain't our people, and we ain't staying here. But, Willis! <laughs> How many kids like us got a chance like this? Don't you realize we have everything going for us now? Forget it. Come 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, you and me are going back to Harlem where we belong. <laughs> after Papa died, who was it that looked after you while Mama worked? You did, Willis. Well, now I'm your mama and your papa. <laughs> and I say 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, we split. Can't we split after breakfast? Uh, no. <laughs> Willis, I know you're my brother and I do what you say, but I got feelings about things, too. I think you're wrong. Well, just don't go spilling to anybody that we're leaving tomorrow, or you won't even get dinner tonight. Fellas, I got some great news. I just managed to get tickets for the circus 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Hey! Real. You can't go. <laughs> Why not? Arnold's got a rest. I do? Yeah. <laughs> you got tired blood. <laughs> now, that's no excuse. I've got tired blood, too. Yeah, he goes to sleep an hour before I do. <laughs> <laughs> any, any chance seeing that circus at a different time? Well, what time would you prefer? How about six o'clock tomorrow morning? <laughs> now, Arnold, you know that that's impossible. Well, we'll just have to do it another time. Anyway, Saturday night, we have tickets to the Knicks Lakers basketball game. Hey, you that's can't go to that either. <laughs> Unless that's at six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Saturday night, we gotta go to our friend's birthday party. Which friend is that, Willis? The one with the birthday. Yeah, that's him, all right. <laughs> I get the impression you're going to turn down every suggestion I make before I can even suggest it. But I'm still going to make one final suggestion. What's that? That you reconsider my other two suggestions. <laughs> Mrs. Garrett, if I told you that Arnold and Willis turned down a chance to see the circus and a Knicks-Lakers basketball game, what would you say? I'd say I'm available for both events. <laughs> you know something? I have a feeling that my new tenants are planning to leave. I guess I just haven't been able to make them feel like they're part of the family. Well, may I suggest something, sir? Oh, please do. The way to do it is to, to have a little fun with them. Family fun. In my family, fun was sitting around counting our money. <laughs> I never had any fun until I was old enough to count. <laughs> laughing like that and you'll get another raise. <laughs> oh, well, I'll tell you, our family fun was entertaining each other. Like after dinner, someone sing and someone do something else and then I'd dance ballet in my little tutu. Say, there's a thought. Forget it. <laughs> my tutu has turned into a tutu by four four. Still giving me a good idea. I got a terrific way to surprise the boys tonight. Get Kimberly, and I'm gonna tell you both what I'm gonna do. Yes, sir. Now, oh, that's what I call an excellent meal. I can't wait to get rid of these dumb braces. I'm tired of making sparks with my fork. <laughs> Willis, where are you going? It's our room. Come on, Arnold. Oh, you don't want to miss family fun time. 
Family fun time? What channel's that on? <laughs> That's an old Drummond tradition. We all get together after dinner and we have fun entertaining each other. Oh, leave that for now, Mrs. Garrett. It's family fun time. <laughs> Here come the clowns. <laughs> Please, be seated. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to be entertained by the world's greatest magician, the great Ndromondo. <laughs> Young man, would you please be my assistant? Sure. <laughs> now, I have here in my hand a $10 bill, which in some countries is worth as much as 65 cents. <laughs> I'm going to make the $10 bill disappear. Abracadabra, abracadabra. It is gone. Oh, come on. Arnold took it. That ain't no trick. Oh, yes, it is. The trick is to get the $10 back from Arnold. So much for the great Dramondo. <laughs> All right, Mrs. Garrett, you're next. What are you going to do for us? Oh, uh, well, I never know till the spotlight hits me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the radio. <laughs> What did you do that for? Because now it's my turn. The great Willis is about to do his famous disappearing act. Come on, Arnold. Wait a minute, fellas. I think that may be for you. Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> What's all that stuff for? That's all for you guys. It's the toy store. <laughs> it's for both of you, Willis. Come on, Willis. Join the fun. <laughs> Here comes Zach to Jay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Willis. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Drummond. Oh, yeah. you could be old, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> well, you go, Tom. Go. Yeah. 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 make way for the lone Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> Arnold, get off that thing. You want me off? You're going to have to shoot me off. <laughs> I mean, get off of here. What's the matter, Willis? Mr. Drummond. You bought a lot of nice toys. But you can't buy us. I'm not trying to buy you. I'm just trying to make you feel at home. Come on, Arnold. We still leave in the morning. Arnold, you don't really want to leave, do you? No, but I got it. Without me, Willis is nothing. <laughs> oh, Daddy, please don't let them leave. As you are, or are you the only one in the family that got the disease? <laughs> I ain't stubborn. I'm proud. Can a man be proud and own a pony at the same time? <laughs> Willis, there's something I want to say to you. You didn't even give yourself a chance to get to know us. The only thing I'm guilty of is trying to make you and your brother feel at home. Yeah. Mr. Drummond's Santa Claus. And you're treating him like our old landlord. <laughs> <laughs> Toys and money ain't family. That's right, Willis. Toys and money ain't family. Family is love and caring. Maybe I overdid it. But I did it because I cared about your mother. And now I care about you. But caring has to be a two-way proposition. And you're not even willing to meet us halfway. The worst part of it is, you're only thinking about yourself. 
You're not even considering your brother. You're just being selfish, Willis. Willis, not one word out of you, Arnold. Does this count as a word? <laughs> if Mama was alive, you would have got a lot worse than a raspberry. What you talking about? We're here because before Mama died, she asked Mr. Drummond to take care of us. Do you think she'd send us to live with somebody who didn't want us? I do what you tell me to do, Willis. But you've been a sourpuss from the minute we got here. Mr. Drummond's right. You're not being fair to me or you or him or Mama. Willis! I've been sitting here soaking and thinking. Does that mean I can say, welcome a boy, son? Yeah. Strong. 